following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Happy Black Friday from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, where a 333rd straight full house is on red alert for Senior Day. Iowa took the 300-mile one-highway business trip from Iowa City to Lincoln, and they have their eyes on a fourth road win this season. Nebraska's 8-3 year has been a roller coaster ride full of injuries and adversity, but also with finishes for the ages. And this afternoon, the storybook adds a new chapter as a former senior walk-on makes his first ever start at quarterback in his final home game. Nebraska, Iowa, now. ABC's coverage of college football presented by K Jewelers. There hasn't been an empty seat in Memorial Stadium since 1962. And over 90,000 are here again today to watch their Huskers meet Iowa. And for the day after Thanksgiving in Lincoln, the weather is ideal. Temperatures expected to climb into the low 40s, and the sun is out. In the Big Ten Legends Division, Michigan has, Michigan State has already won the division outright, but Nebraska and Iowa looking to add to their bowl resumes today, and we welcome you to Lincoln. No down lineman and a five-man rush for Iowa. Kellogg, well protected, but throws an interception. Picked off by Anthony Hitchens. One of those senior linebackers on Mount Rushmore at linebacker for Iowa gets the interception, a 19-yard return. The first interception of Anthony Hitchens' career. Pellini gets to nine, maybe ten wins. Is that something that should be more appreciated than it seems to be here in Lincoln? Well, his supporters would say, look, the guy's won nine games an awful lot of times. He has won divisions uh, in the Big 12 and that he's dealing with a lot of injuries. Kellogg, intercepted again. James Morris dives underneath. Two linebackers with interceptions on the first two possessions for Nebraska. Well, we talked about this group being as good as any in the country, and normally that is about their run defense. Jordan Kanziri right up the middle. Close to an Iowa first down. And it is an Iowa first down without measurement. A game of gain of 10. Third down and goal. Two on the play clock. And Rudolph gets it off again. Looking in zone. Right at the goal line. The catch is made. Rod, you called it. And there's CJ Fedorowitz. They may have known where he was, but he still got across the goal line with a touchdown catch, his sixth of the year. Well, they're so dangerous. The, the game plan, the thinking has to be you want to double those guys down around the goal line. And Fedorowicz, you can't handle him one-on-one. -on -one. He's 6'7", 265, and look, that's good coverage, but he is so big, and that throw is so on the money, that's a tough deal. You need help down there. In the uh, coach's boots. By action for Ruda. Checks down. Kanziri makes a man miss. No one home for Nebraska as Kanziri hammers his way down to about the 12-yard line. Tight ends are a big issue down here. Good blocking on the edge for Weissman. <laughs> Works his way off a tackle. Works his way off another. He's into the end zone for a Hawkeye touchdown. <laughs> Wow. What did you say the game started? A hammer, hammer looking for a nail? Hammer meet nail again and again. You're sort of guessing and projecting where the ball is. I, I would let it stand as it is. Well, worst case scenario for Iowa is the nose of the ball will be about touching the yeah. goal line. After further review, the ball carrier's knee was down. And the ball was short of the goal line. It'll be first down on the half yard line. Half yard line. And they'll go with Weissman. Touchdown. Fourteen three. Iowa has the lead. As Nebraska gets the field goal before halftime, but they still trail. Let's go down to Quinn. 
Coach, what was your reaction to the two early interceptions? Well, what do you think? What kind of question is that? How did uh, Ron respond on that last drive? Uh, he was fine. He'll be all right. He's is, a strong kid. Is Tommy available, Coach? What's up? Is Tommy Armstrong available? Yeah, he's certain, but he, if we need him, he can go. Thank you. I think it's a pretty fair question to ask if you're Quinn Kesnick about your reaction Man, coach to the early interceptions. Coach is cranky this time of year, huh? Abdullah again. At the goal line, reaches. He's in for a Husker touchdown. He's a bad man, and they need to get him back involved in the ball game. And they did. Santos was there to bring him down after a gain of four. But it brings up third down and three. Yeah, third and three. They're still on schedule. I mean, either or here for Iowa. They're not afraid to run the ball on third and three. And so you have to be careful if you're Nebraska and you think in terms of bringing in your nickel package. They will run against five defensive backs. Iowa is four for eight on third down. And they've got Damon Bullock in the game. To the right of Rudolph. Four-man rush. Rudolph well protected, has all day down the sideline, looking for Martin Manley and drops it in for a big play. Might be in a throwing situation here, though, on second down and 12. Rudolph high to the sideline and incomplete. And a flag comes out. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver, it sailed way over his head. The Nebraska sideline wants an uncatchable ball to be ruled. Well, you know what we hear every week about uncatchable. That's where first. Defense, number 13. By rule, the ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Officials tell us every week uncatchable they assume that every receiver is a phenomenal athlete who can make the incredible catch and that if that ball isn't essentially thrown into the stands it's not uncatchable Bo Pelini just cost his team 15 more yards after the play was can't over can't do that unsportsmanlike conduct Nebraska bench area head coach 15 yard penalty first down you, you, you can't do that you got to keep your composure you're in the middle of a of a battle here you're down four and you're going to put him inside the red zone because you don't like an official's call and it's the official that has nothing to do with the no. call obviously he's just taking his anger out you can't do that the official on the far side of the field swinging his hat right in the official's face you just can't do that Cross 15, 15 yards so now i was in the red zone and here goes westman Inside the 12-yard line, four yards on that carry. Well, and here's the other thing. You can't be the leader of your team and lose control and expect your players to be composed and to not get upset with the officials and everything else. You've got to set that tone. You have to. 31 yards away for the former walk-on Mike Meyer. And he knocks it through. The second leading scorer in Iowa history to only Nate Keating gets three, but it could have been seven if not for Cavante Martin Manley having that one go right through his arms. Ron Kellogg looked okay as he went to the sideline, was having a pretty animated conversation with a few of the Nebraska coaches, but he took a shot a moment ago. Yeah, it's easy for us to say he looks okay. He didn't take we didn't take that shot. I mean he felt that. And Armstrong has been out the entire game. He was the starter for six of the last seven games. More of an option-oriented quarterback. Bad ankle. We detailed this at the start. It has been a soap opera this year for Nebraska quarterback. Taylor Martinez in and out of the lineup out right now. And a fake punt on fourth down and three. 
rolling the dice, Bo Pelini in his own end of the field, and the Hawkeyes are not fooled. Yeah, you know, he's going to get a lot of grief for two things today. One is outburst after what he thought was an uncatchable ball with a pass interference call, and that fake right there, back in your end zone. You've had a couple of good series. You're in the game. It's a one-possession game, and this is a turnover. Ace is now a turnover. They're just outside the red zone. Very risky. Iowa had fallen victim to some fake punts earlier this year, but they were not fooled there. As Kanziri is in a tailback. And a rollout for Rudolph. Fires towards the end zone. Martin Manley reaches out. He's got a touchdown. One play after the turnover on the fake punt. Flag down. Holy defense. We were 44. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. The play action fake didn't work. Nowhere up the seam to go with the football as Kirksey came through to bring him down for a loss of six. Yeah. Morris has a pick. Hitchens has a pick. Kirksey has a sack. And now it's second and 17. Again, it's a jailhouse rush and the ball pops out. That might be ruled a fumble. It looked as if Kellogg's arm might have been coming forward. The ball fell in no man's land. It's still recovered by Nebraska, but this is a big call. And that's a loss of about 12 or 13 yards. So now it's third down and a mile, and they need to pick up about 11 yards just to get the field goal ranked. That ball pops out. More pressure on Kellogg, and now Kellogg is hurt. That's the third hit he's taken today where he's looked a little bit shaky afterwards. And... Signal behind the back for Rudolph. A drop to throw. Down the sideline. Incomplete. Tavon Smith, the intended receiver. It will be third down and eight. Josh Looks Mitchell like there in coverage. Rudolph is down. And now Rudolph is hurt. And he hasn't moved. I mean, he's been on his back the entire time. If you feel good about your defense, you can kick it and say, well, we'll get two more possessions and have a shot at it. They'll have to hustle to get lined up, down to 10 on the play clock, and they're still trying to get into the right I don't think they formation. like the play. I don't think they like their play. It's taking them too long. Fourth down and three. They do get the snap off. A rollout. Open. Making the catch. Turning up field. Up the pile on Inunua. Is he in? Touchdown. What a play by Quincy Anunwa. Uh, how about the throw and catch and finish? At about 8 a.m. for the kick. Amir Abdullah on first down. Lost the football and his helmet. What a hit and a takeaway for Iowa. It was a combination of Christian Kirksey and Anthony Hitchens that hit Abdullah, knocked the helmet off, and jarred the ball free. After the takeaway in a one-possession game, the backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard, still in for Iowa, but again starting for the sixth time today in Nebraska territory. A handoff to Kanziri. Gets to the edge. No one home for Nebraska. Out of bounds inside the one. Mark Weissman, the eye back on first and goal at the two. And a smart play here by the backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard. Why not take the clock down as deep as you can? Inside of 10 on the play clock. Weissman turns the corner. Touchdown. Flags down. It looks as if after the play this might be an altercation after the touchdown was scored the result of the play is a touchdown after
play was over. Personal foul. Defense, number 44. Personal foul. Offense, number 80. Penalties offset. Try for point. So Gregory and Prager Kobo got hooked up down there after the touchdown. There is the fumble by Abdullah that set up the, the turnover and the big play when Weissman getting the touchdown here. The good block by his fullback, Adam Cox, got him to the edge. And Kirk Ferentz is going wild. And he has to be restrained by his assistants. As it appears, he believes maybe the flag should have only been thrown on Nebraska. I didn't see the altercation looking more at the touchdown, but obviously Kirk Ferentz did. And he obviously is upset. It seems as if, based on the offsetting penalties call, that... But the touchdown stands. And it's a 14-point lead again for the Hawkeyes. Must stop for Nebraska if they want to have any chance with five minutes to go. Third down at two. Weissman bottled up, flagged down. And it looks as if he is short of the line to make anyway. Let's check the penalty. Well, the Iowa players are pointing to Nebraska like they've been told. It Personal was foul. Hands to the face. Defense number seven. That's a killer. Half the distance to yeah. the goal line. Automatic first down. Don't really know. Big leg for Bethard. Touchdown. A little salt in the wounds for most of the 91,000 here, but there's about a 1,000, as you can see, up there in black and gold in that far corner. They couldn't be further away from where that last play was run. Yeah, how, how excited do you think Bethard is? And well, that, that's a nice deal for him to come in after Rudolph gets hurt, and he finishes it off with a, uh, a nice little bootleg. Kirk Ferentz in his 15th year. It's hard to believe he has been at Iowa that long, but you go all the way back to December of 1998 when he took over the Hawkeye program. And he was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year three times, won the Big Ten in 2002 and through 2004. And those were the days where everyone was wondering how long Kirk Ferentz could be held on to yeah, well, by he, the Hawkeyes because he was going to be the next coach of the 49ers. He was going to be the next coach of the Rams. And he was mentioned for every job basically from the, the Mississippi West. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. He's got a good situation. He's making a lot of money at Iowa. I think he likes it there. He's a lifer, in my view. There is something to be said. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a head coach one time about the idea of having a lot of pro interest but staying in college. And the quote that the coach said to me was, there's something to be said for don't mess with happy. <laughs> happy, it, happy is good. Happy is good. If you've got a good situation, your family likes it where you are, Iowa City's a great place and a great collegiate atmosphere for a family to be raised in. Don't mess with happy. Monty Cross loses a yard, and most likely, no need for another play to be run. That's a terrific win for the Hawkeyes on the road to come to Nebraska. And they have a chance to run across and find the Heroes Trophy. And celebrate a win in what might be a burgeoning rivalry in the Big Ten. I love that scene. That's always fun. When there's a trophy at stake, guys get pretty excited about it. That's pretty cool. Let's go down to Quinn Kesnick. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, what, what was the, the factor in this game that made the biggest difference? Yeah, it, was just, it was a hard game all the way through, and our, our guys battled, their guys battled. It was just a, a really good football game. How do you best describe the play of your senior linebackers? Well, they've been outstanding all season long, not, not only on the field, their leadership. Uh, it's just been invaluable. It's a big reason why we're, uh, you know, we turned things around a little bit. Yeah, what's it like to go from four, four and eight last year to eight and four this year? Well, we don't want to try it again, if that's okay. We did that, you know, 99, 2000. Hopefully we're off that uh, elevator. But, you know, the credit goes to our players. They've worked extremely hard since the end of last November. Uh, and it all starts with the older guys. They give us great leadership. 
you know, and that's uh, today was a byproduct of all that. As they grab that Heroes Trophy, can we now call this a rivalry? Well, it's a start. It's a start. I'll leave it right there. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach. Man. Great Thank job. You. Well, the Heroes Trophy, at least for this year, won for the first time by Iowa, as they have a chance to carry the silver football off the field. 38-17 is our final. Iowa takes out Nebraska. Coming up next here on ABC, it's college football presented by Kay Jewelers. It's the Miami Hurricanes heading to Heinz Field to take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. For Quint Kesnick and Rod Gilmore, our entire crew have a happy Thanksgiving weekend. So long from Lincoln.